spotted violets, and congratulations balloons, and cards of many sentiments. She made her own cards. She wasn't a great artist. Her people were stick figures. The girls all had triangle skirts and pigtails. You would never mistake one of her cards for Hallmark, but I had never seen cards more heartfelt. They were meaningful in a way that a school child's homemade Christmas card is meaningful. She never left her name. But finally, after much pestering from me, she did tell me how she knew what was going on in people's lives. It was simple, she said. She reads the daily paper. Not the headlines or the front page, or the sports page or the comics, or the TV listings or the Hollywood gossip. What she reads were the parts that most people ignored. The parts without headlines or pictures. The boondocks of the paper. The hospital admissions. The death notices. The birthday and wedding announcements. The police blotter. The coming calendar events. Most of all, she reads the fillers. I love fillers, she exclaimed. What are fillers? I said. She explained that fillers are little items that are not considered important enough to be the story or to have a headline. Uh, they're never more than one column wide, never more than an inch or two deep. They are most commonly found at the bottom of inside pages, where the eye seldom travels. If editors had their way, they would never use fillers. But sometimes a reporter doesn't write enough words, and the story doesn't reach all the way to the bottom of the page. The paper can't have a blank space there, so the editor dumps in a filler. A filler doesn't need to be news. It doesn't need to be important. It doesn't even have to be read. All it has, all it's asked to do is to take up space. A filler might come from anywhere and be about anything. It might tell how many pounds of rice a typical Chinese person eats in their lifetime, or say something about beetles in Sumatra. Or the filler might come down from the street. It might mention that so-and-so's cat is missing, or that so-and-so has a collection of antique marbles. I searched through the fillers like a prospector digging for gold. So that's it? I said. You read the papers? No, she said. That's not all. There's also a place where I get my hair cut. I always overhear good stuff there. And of course, there's the bulletin boards. Do you know how many bulletin boards there are in town? Sure, I said facetiously. I count them every day. So do I, she said. Not kidding. So far, I'm up to 41. Offhand, I couldn't think of one, except the plywood roadrunner. What do you learn from bulletin boards? Oh, somebody just opened a business. Somebody lost a dog. Somebody needs a companion. Who advertises for a companion, I said. Who needs one that bad? Lonely people, she said. Old people. Just somebody to sit with them for a while. I pictured Stargirl sitting in the dark room with an old woman. I couldn't picture myself doing the same thing. Sometimes she seemed so far from me. We were passing Pizza Pizza. There was a bulletin board in there, she said. It was just inside the door. It was smothered with business cards and notices. I pointed to one that said, Odd Jobs, Ask for Mike. Call this number. So what's that tell you, I said, with more challenge in my voice than I had intended. She read it. Well, it could be that Mike lost his regular job and can't find another, so he's hiring himself out. Or even if he has a regular job, it's not enough to make ends meet. He's either not very neat, or he can't afford a whole piece of paper. This is just a scrap. So what would you do for him, I said. Oh, I don't know. My parents might have an odd job that, need, that they need done. Or maybe I do. Or maybe I could just send him a card. What kind of card would he get? A keep your chin up card, she poked me. Hey, want to play a card game? I had a feeling she wasn't talking about poker. Sure, I said. She said she invented it. All you need is your eyes and one other person. I picked somebody on the street, the mall, a store, wherever, and I follow them. Say it's a her. I follow her for 15 minutes and not a minute more. I time myself. The game is, after 15 minutes of watching, I have to guess what kind of card she needs. But how can you get it to her, I said. You don't know where she lives. True, that's as far as it goes. 
That's why it's just a game. It's just for fun. She snuggled into me. She whispered in my ear, let's play. I said, sure. She said we needed a mall. I usually steered away from the Micah Mall. Too many silent treatment M-A-H-S kids hanging around, around there. We drove 10 miles to the Redstone Mall. It was Saturday afternoon. We picked out a woman, a lime green skirt, white sandals. We guessed her age was early 40s. She was buying a soft pretzel, regular, salted, at Auntie Anne's. She carried the pretzel in a white paper bag. We followed her into Suncoast video. We overheard her ask for when Harry met Sally. They didn't have it. She passed Sonoma, and then came back and went in. She wandered about, touching pottery with one fingertip, feeling the surfaces. She stopped before the dinner plates. She lifted one with a French cafe painted on it. Van Gogh, Stargirl whispered. The lady seemed to think about the plate, even closed her eyes, holding it to her chest with both hands, as if feeling vibrations. But then she put it back and walked out. On to Sears. Lingerie. Bed clothes. I was uneasy, spying from behind a rack of frilly things. She was flipping through night shirts when time ran out. Stargirl and I conferred in the corridor. Okay, she said. What do you think? I think I feel like a stalker, I said. A good stalker, she said. You first, I said. Well, she's divorced and lonely. No wedding ring. Wants someone in her life. A home life. She wishes she, wishes she were Sally and her Harry would come along. She would make him dinner and snuggle with him all night. She tries to eat low-fat foods. She works for a travel agency. She took a free cruise last year, but all she met on the boat were creeps. Her name is Clarissa. She played the clarinet in high school, and her favorite soap is Irish Spring. I boggled. How do you know all of that? She laughed. I don't. I'm guessing. That's what makes it fun. So what card would you send her? She put her fingertip to her lips. Hmm. To Clarissa, I would send a uh, while you're waiting for Harry, be good to yourself card. How about you? I would send a... Uh, I mulled over the, fr the phrasing. Don't let Harry catch you flicking card. Now it was her turn to boggle. Huh? Didn't you see her pick her nose, I said, in Suncoast? Not really. I saw her hand go to her nose, like she was like scratching it or something. Yeah, or something. She was picking, that's what. She was quick and sneaky too, a real pro. She gave me a playful shove. You're kidding. I held up my hands. I'm serious. She was standing in front of the comedies. Her figure went in and it came out of there with something on it. She carried it around for about a minute. And just as she was leaving Suncoast, when she thought nobody was looking, she flicked. And I didn't see where it landed. She stared at me. I raised my right hand and put my left over my heart. No lie. She broke out laughing so loudly I was embarrassed. She grabbed my arm with both hands to keep from collapsing. Mall walkers stared. We carded two others that day. A woman who spent her whole 15 minutes feeling leather jackets. We called her Betty. And a man we called Adam because of his huge Adam's apple, which we renamed Adam's pumpkin. No more pick and flickers. And I did have fun. Whether it came from the game or simply from being with her, I don't know. I do know I was surprised at how close I felt to Clarissa and Betty and Adam after watching them for only 15 minutes. Throughout the day, Stargirl had been dropping money. She was the Johnny Appleseed of loose change. A penny here, a nickel there, tossed into the sidewalk, or laid on a shelf or a bench, even quarters. I hate change, she said. It's so jangly. Do you realize how much you must throw away in a year, I said? Do you ever see a little kid's face when he spots a penny on the sidewalk, she said? When her change purse was empty, we drove back to Micah. Along the way, she invited me to dinner at her house. And that was 20.